Hello everybody and welcome. I am Ethan with Wheels Boy and today I would like to start our video with a question. What is the best selling car model in the Chinese automotive market? You know, if you don't know the answer to this question, you might be imagining something like an affordable small sedan or a small crossover. Or if you're American, you might even be thinking of a Ford F-150 pickup truck or something like that. Well, these are all wrong because the best selling car model in the Chinese market is this, the Wuling Hongguang. Today, I would like to delve into why the Hongguang outsells models from giant corporations like Volkswagen, General Motors, and Toyota in the Chinese car market. There are a few reasons that the Hongguang line is so popular, but let's start with the price. This particular car is the Hongguang Plus, and it retails for around $10,000. To understand why that's such a steal, we need to dive in and see what that money gets you. Starting from the outside, you can see that the Hongguang has a practical design. It's a box, because boxes are very good at putting a bunch of stuff inside of them. This actually belongs to a segment of cars that is often referred to as mianbaochu here in China. That translates directly to bread car. And it makes sense if you look at it. For most angles, it just looks like a big loaf of bread. Uh, the only concession to style that I can find is the small rear spoiler here at the back, but I'm guessing it doesn't produce F1 car levels of downforce. Overall though, I think it's an honest design that doesn't try to hide the fact that it's got uh, practicality as its uh, raison d'etre. Sorry, my, my Chinese is much better than my French. For a car with such a small footprint, the Hongguang has an incredible amount of interior space. If I just open up the rear here, having a look inside, you can see why this car is one of the driving forces behind the entire Chinese economy. Imagine how much stuff you can fit in here if you didn't have the seats in it. That practical shape is another big reason that the Chinese market loves the Hongguang. This isn't the only configuration, there are also two, five, and eight seat versions, as well as ones with sliding doors. The two seat version is the one you see the most, as they are used to haul everything and anything around China's cities. It is the work vehicle of choice for plumbers, construction sites, butchers, fruit sellers, and more or less anyone that needs a cheap way to move a lot of stuff or people. It also helps that pickup trucks are not allowed into the center of most Chinese cities, so they are off the table as a work vehicle. The theme of practicality over style extends into the interior as well. Here in the center console, you have a touch screen flanked by one, two, three, four, five, six touch sensitive buttons and three knobs. And that's pretty much it. Uh, material quality here on the interior is, well, it's not great, but this is a cheap car. So you kind of expect this level of uh, hard plastic to be everywhere. One big benefit that this car has is that the greenhouse is much larger than many, many other modern cars. So a lot of light is allowed in and, and that keeps it from feeling like kind of a plastic coffin as you drive around. It's not all good news on the interior front. While this higher trim level car has both driver and passenger side airbags, lower trim levels have no airbags at all let alone the side curtain or side impact airbags that will be required to be sold in the European or North American markets. Uh, none of the Wuling Hongguang line have uh, electronic stability programming either, which kind of makes me nervous about driving it every day. Sitting in the back seat, you can see that space is actually quite adequate, at least for second row citizens. Um, the material quality of the seats, both front and rear, is 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 fine. I imagine that this leather is not particularly genuine, but it will wear very well, which is important in a car like this. Um, the seats are also very comfortable. Um, actually, kind of more supportive than you might expect from the back seats of an MPV like this. They're not M3 level hugging you, but they're also not seat cushions kind of seats from a 1970s Cadillac. Okay, actually, now that I'm in the back seat, I have to admit that there's more space than you might actually expect. I'm about five foot nine, five foot eight. 
um, probably, you know, 1.73 meters or whatever. And uh, while I do have, you know, plenty of leg room here, my, my only issue is the fact that I'm kind of eating my knees because of the raised level of the floor. But if I had to sit back here for a short trip, I, I could handle it. The Hongguang Plus is powered by a 1.5 liter turbocharged four cylinder attached to a six speed manual transmission. All Hongguang models are also rear wheel drive. Despite what you might be thinking, this rear wheel drive manual turbocharged vehicle is not the performance MPV you've been dreaming of. This engine maxes out at 147 horsepower and 250 newton meters of torque. Non plus models make do with a 1.2 liter naturally aspirated engine. Considering the speed of this 1.5 turbo, I can't imagine how slow that 1.2 must be. Acceleration off the line is adequate. There's plenty of torque available from the start. Um, that's probably gonna be pretty helpful when you fill the back of this thing up with pipes, hammers, fruit, meat, or people, or whatever it is that you wanna haul around with it. This thing was built to handle heavy loads and rough country roads. Handling itself wasn't really the goal. As a result, it kind of wallows in the corners. Uh, the biggest complaint I have though isn't the handling, it's, it's definitely the NVH. The noise, especially from the engine, is almost deafening. Um, there's just got to be zero sound deadening on the firewall and on the interior here. Overall, though, it's really easy and comfortable to drive. I think this thing is nearly impossible to stall. Um, and as far as serving as a thing for carrying people and carrying cargo, I think it does a really good job. I mentioned this earlier when talking about the interior, but it really shows up when you're driving the car. And that's the fact that this thing has a pretty big greenhouse for a modern vehicle. A lot of the cars you get in now, due to the safety standards, uh, they're kind of like driving around in a bunker. You gotta rely on all the cameras and everything just to see what's around you. In this car, you've got plenty of glass all around and your visibility is, is, is fantastic. I think the only place that it doesn't work so great is looking out the back and that's only because you've got a, a seat that kind of blocks the, oh my God. Box of view. See, this is what I mean uh, when I say that the suspension is um, the suspension is rudimentary. Driving around on this rough road, um, you feel it's not harsh, but you definitely get jostled around. I would describe it kind of like how it feels to drive a pickup truck, especially when it doesn't have anything in the back. Now that we've had a chance to have a closer look at the Wuling Hongguang, I hope that you guys can better understand why this car outsells so many others here in the Chinese market. It has a combination of affordability, practicality, and efficiency that a great deal of Chinese consumers find very compelling. Would it work in the European or North American markets? No, it wouldn't. It doesn't have the kind of refinement uh, that we expect nor does it have the even basic safety equipment that was required by law. But I think most Chinese consumers are willing to put up with that little bit, at least for now. Thanks everybody for watching. And I want to encourage you to go to the comments down below and let us know if there are any Chinese market cars that you're interested in learning more about. After all, the Chinese automotive market is the largest in the world. There's a lot to learn.